What's going on guys? Welcome to Essential Style. Today we are taking a look and discussing my four year review and experience of the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill Plain Toe Boot. So it's a boot that I've had. I've had this boot for four years. I bought it in 2016. And basically the story with this boot was, if you watch my Red Wing Iron Ranger video, back in 2016, I had bought the Iron Ranger 8119s, which were the burgundy ones. Those didn't work out too well. So I ended up selling them in the summer of 2016, but in the fall it was coming up and I wanted to get into a good pair of boots. So I didn't know what was what after not having a great experience with my first pair of Red Wing Iron Rangers. I ended up saying, you know what, let me just get the Wolverine 1000 mile boot. They seem really simple. I was just going to get it where it would let a sole. I was going to glue on my own sole protector on the bottom of them. Then Alan Edmonds went ahead and released this boot. And they priced it at $350 at the time, $350 US dollars. And then they put it on sale for $250. I said, well, this is kind of a no-brainer. Why, why would I pay $360 for the Wolverine 1000 mile boot at the time? That's what it was going for. When I can get essentially the same type of boot, except I don't have to worry about a leather sole. And my big beef with leather sole, especially for a boot, is you're supposed to wear a boot in the fall and winter, mostly. And it rains and snows a lot in the fall and winter. And... Leather is just not good in the rain and snow. It's not designed for that. There's nothing wrong with it. I, I like leather soles, but it's not the right tool for the job. After all that, I ended up buying this. And that was back at the time when I was still wear working in New York City. I wore that all winter. And that was, like I said, that was back in 2016. So we're coming up a little over four years now. We're going to go through the details of this boot and my overall experience with it, what I like and what I don't like. All right, so this is an American-made Goodyear welted shoe. So what that basically means is it is actually stitched. The leather part, the upper, is called, this is called, is stitched to the actual sole. And the big advantage of that is that when this wears away, the shoemaker can actually unstitch the bottom and then restitch a new one on there. Of course, it's at a cost, and of course, they can't do that like a hundred times. I think they're going to do it like two or three times before the boot just kind of gives up and you need a new one. But it's still pretty cool that when your boot wears out, you don't have to just throw it out and get a new pair. Rehealable as well. I did get these rehealed a little while, so that's pretty cool. Word on the street is Goodyear Welter Shoe is a bit more water resistant. I think with my Echoes that are just a one piece construction, those are going to be super water resistant. I have worn these in the rain and snow. They do pretty well. My feet do get wet, but overall they're, they're pretty decent. One of the main reasons why I chose this boot and I got really excited and I'm satisfied with this because this day night rubber outsole this day night rubber outsole hard as nails tough as nails this thing has been wearing like crazy you could probably see I mean it's a bit worn right there but overall guys I mean I've worn this shoe like crazy it was one of my main winter shoes when I was working in New York City walking an average of five miles a day this is one of the toughest soles I think you can get as far as I've found in my experience this leather is the Horween Chrome XL leather. It's kind of shiny, but it gets beat up pretty good, you can see. I purposefully didn't polish these or didn't do anything to them for the past month. I just wanted to let you guys see how they look. They're relatively no, low maintenance. Obviously, they're not, they don't look as nice as a shiny leather dress shoe, but I think for what it is, it's a very good, smart, casual boot that can work well in business casual. It could also work well in smart casual. A lot of times I like wearing these with khakis. I think khakis, blue v-neck sweater, light, light blue Oxford shirt, I think it looks great. Would I wear it with a suit? No, I wouldn't, but it does look a little bit dressier than, for example, my Red Wing Iron Rangers, and it does look a bit smart casual. And think about the shape of it, I just really like the shape of the boot. I feel like it works in lots of situations, and I feel like 95% of the time, the boot's gonna look great. You know, it's, it's nothing crazy, it's not flashy, it's not out there, but it's just gonna work. And as far as the break-in process goes, Minimal, minimal break-in. They do have a really soft insole right there. I don't know that they need that. Um, I tried to do some research on it. I think it's a pour on insole. I know they do have a layer of cork that does mold to your foot. After breaking in my Iron Rangers that I have, these do have some pretty good arch support, and these definitely are pretty comfortable. So if you're worried about the comfort thing, don't. It's You can pretty much just put them on your feet and start walking. They don't fit weird or anything like that. It's just... Really simple process, guys. Next up, I want to talk about my experience with it. Like I was saying before, I got this shoe, or I got this boot four years ago. I ended up walking all over New York City for work back in the winter of 2016, going into 2017. And then 
that Thanksgiving, I remember I was in Brooklyn, New York, and I wore these, and I spent Thanksgiving with my then-girlfriend, now fiancé. Uh, we walked around Brooklyn all day and met up with some of her brothers and sisters, some of her siblings, and I think my phone told me that I clocked in 10 miles that day, and my feet were my feet were tired, but overall, my feet were good. So these boots, they're, they'll, they'll do it. If, you, if you're going on vacation or if you want to have that one boot where you can walk forever in and it's not going to give any issues, this is the ticket. This is, trust me, I mean, that, at least that's my experience. You know, I'm not a foot doctor, but this worked for me. I know that my feet, if I'm walking forever, I can just keep going in these boots. As I said before, the day-night sole, it's getting a bit thin. I can probably give it one more season, but I've had the boots for four years. I think it's time for a new sole. I did get a new heel on them, so a lot of times the boot does kind of feel like it sits a bit higher. The sole's gotten a bit thinner. So if anything, just a new sole will kind of even it out and make it sit a bit more you know less back heavy it'll just kind of even the even the feel of the boot out one winter i remember maybe this was the same winter or the winter after that i'm not sure on the left boot i believe it was this is a nail seated boot or this is a nail seated heel this part right here started to separate this is before i had them re but the boot started to separate from the heel started to separate from the boot because i was wearing them it was like in a snowstorm and i just didn't want to wear my bean boots because they make my feet sweat and they just whatever i'll just wear these i'm only going to be walking two miles from the venue to the subway when on my way home from queens and this was kind of separating right here but funnily enough as i kept walking in them for the next two weeks as i was walking and constantly hitting my heel on the ground just walking it ended up hammering itself back in so i thought it was kind of funny i thought it was pretty cool it was just something that i don't know why what happened that it just kind of separated maybe it was just the moisture got to it but i just i just found that pretty funny and quite frankly pretty cool one thing that i'm not too fond of about these boots are they're not really the greatest boot in the late spring or the early fall they're pretty much a 50 or 40 degree Fahrenheit boot and below you start wearing them above 60 degrees It's gonna kind of get hot. They're not gonna be overall too hot But it definitely is not going to be a boot that you can wear year-round I mean, I'm sure you could but for me, it's just way too uncomfortable. The boot is just way too hot And I think it's just because that thick Chrome XL leather which makes the boot so good just causes a lot of heat to get trapped inside the boot Not really something it's not the boots fault, you know boots are not summer shoes anyway but, you know, it's for me, it would just kind of be nice that if this was an all-season boot, not just a three-season boot, really, I wouldn't really need to have as many shoes as I currently have. I could just have less things to do more, more for me. And with that being said, before I started to get into other boots, this was the first one of the first nicer boots that I had that actually worked for me, like I was saying earlier in the video in the introduction. I ended up just wearing them a lot, but with wearing the same pair of boots all the time, they did, they weren't super comfortable all the time. Now, what I do is I rotate them, so I'll wear these on Monday, my Iron Rangers on Tuesday. I'll kind of rotate them back and forth between my Iron Rangers and these. And what happens is when you wear one shoe that kind of hits certain pressure points and then you rotate them, it ends up being better for your feet. At least that's, that's how it is with me. The same thing, you wouldn't go to the gym and just do chest constantly or you wouldn't go to the gym and train legs every single day you got to give your muscles you got to give your muscles a chance to recover and you got to give them a break so wearing this one it might have good arch support it might have good cushioning where my iron rangers has a little bit less arch support a little bit less cushioning so it kind of hits different pressure points and gives my foot a different workout ever since i've been rotating my shoes i have no more foot pain these things are super comfortable um so that's just something to be aware of not just for this boot but if you're constantly wearing the same pair of shoes all the time Maybe try to get a second or third pair and just rotate in them. Probably make your feet feel a bit better. And I've got to say, I'm not really too into the plain toe boots. I think I prefer the cap toe and the wingtip boots myself. But something about this boot and the silhouette of it on the side, the silhouette of it here, it's just a nice narrow, it's, it's a bit dressy. It's just dressy enough, but it's just casual enough. Whereas the Iron Ranger is a cap toe bit, it can, boot. It could be a bit too bulbous and just kind of looks a bit weird from certain angles. This one can just be a little bit more dressed up. It's just more of a, it just covers more of the spectrum. It just covers more ground. So in conclusion, I think they're a great pair of boots. And I think 95% of guys are going to be able to wear them in 95% of the situations where you'd wear boots in, whether that be business casual, smart casual, basically anything up to a casual suit. And if you really, I'm sure if you really polish them up and you really make sure that you don't have any dings on them like I do mine, 
you might be able to wear them with a casual suit. I mean, nothing saying that you can't, I'm just saying that I wouldn't. Uh, also, these speed hooks might, might cut on the suit trousers. They might get caught on the suit trousers. So that's not something that I would want. I have other options for that, but I'm sure you could do it. But it just really covers a lot of a lot of ground, and it can really be your one boot that just fits into all the situations you can find yourself in. Whether you're going to work on Monday morning, you're going out with your friends, you're going for a walk, you want to look a little bit more polished, but you don't want something that you can, you're going to beat up, this is the ticket. And the nice thing about boots similar to a pair of jeans or a leather jacket, is that certain things, the more you beat them up, the better they look. Whereas a pair of dress shoes or dress boots, you wouldn't really want to beat them up. They're supposed to be nice and shiny. Something like this, it looks better either way, and that's what I think makes it so versatile. And like I always say, multiple situations fits in multiple situations. The nice thing about Alan, a pair of Alan Edmonds, similar to, a, similar to a pair of Red Wings, is you can bring your boot or shoes back to the manufacturer and they can take care of all the resoling, rehealing, whatever you need to get done. It's more of a one-stop shop, whereas Wolverine, I don't have any experience with Wolverine, I don't, not that I'm talking trash about them, but once you buy the boot, I kind of feel like you're on your own, you got to go find your own cobbler. And here in the year 2021, there are no cobblers in every single corner. And so it's just kind of nice that you can just kind of go into an Allen Evans retail store or Red Wing retail store and just drop your boot off. And it, again, it's a one-stop shop. You need laces. You need shoe trees. I think I have shoe trees. You need shoe trees. Um, this is from Allen Edmonds. They can get you a pair of laces. They can get you leather lotion. I have some leather lotion over here. And that's just something that makes it really nice. It just makes it a bit easier for the consumer. So if we compare this boot to the Red Wing Iron Ranger and the Allen Edmonds Daltons, and let's say, what other boot is there? Alden Indy 403 Chrome XL boots. Those three boots compared to this, I think this can cover, not only can it cover the most ground, it's also probably the most cost effective. So the Red Wing Iron Ranger goes for $330, the Wolverine 1000 Mile goes to $385, the Alden Indy boot goes for six or $700, it goes north of $600. These go for 450, 445 to be exact, and I'm sure you can get them on sale. Like I said, I got these four years ago when list price was three fifty, and I paid two fifty for them. So that was that was great. I still think they're a great buy at four hundred forty-five dollars, just because you're getting a boot that's going to last you at least four years before you need a resole, and you can probably even stretch it for five or six years before even needing a resole. So just do the math. You six, twelve, eighteen. You could have that pair of boots for eighteen years. But as far as price, so the Iron Rangers are cheaper. But you can't dress them up as much, right? I mean, you just look at these. All right, like it's kind of cool, but there's no comparison. Which one would you choose if you're going on a job interview or if you want it to be look really dressy? If you're going to work on Monday morning and you got to wear a sport coat and a pair of chinos. This one, right? So that right there, those are the cheaper boots, but those are more of like on the casual side. You also have something like this, which is the Allen Edmonds Dalton Wingtip Dress Boot. And this one goes for the same price, $445. But the problem with this one is it's a dress boot through and through. It's a very sleek, very narrow type of boot. And if it gets too beat up, it doesn't look as cool. You know, it's, it's a dress boot. It's like dress shoes. It's supposed to look nice. You know, it goes with a suit. A suit doesn't look well when it's all worn and torn. A suit looks well when it's nice and clean and pressed. Same thing with this. Also too, with this model, the leather sole. Leather soles are great. They're comfortable. I think they're very elegant. I really enjoy wearing leather soles, but you can't wear them in the rain. You can wear them in the rain if you want to wear them out really fast, or you want to slip and slide them in the snow. This is kind of, again, a one trick pony. And finally, the Alden Indy boots, they're a Chrome XL leather, so very similar type of leather, probably almost exactly the same, but the Alden Indy boot goes for almost $600. So that's around about $150 more than this one. But it does have that nice little, I mean, don't get me wrong, the Alden Indy boot is a beautiful boot and I would love to get a pair. It does have that, what do they call, that mock toe design, which just does bring it down a little bit more, a little bit more casual, but it's just such more of an expensive boot. I've also heard that while it's a comfortable boot, I've heard that the heel and the sole on that one well, it's not a leather sole, it's a rubber sole, it doesn't wear as long. So really, price-wise, this is kind of right in the middle, and for what you're getting, you're getting a boot that is going to wear forever, it's going to be able to take a beating, it's going to be able to fit in almost every situation, and, I mean, if you get it on sale, it's even better.
if you're somebody in the market for a pair of boots and you want to get a nice, good American made boot that's going to be able to cover all sorts of bases, I would absolutely recommend the Higgins Mill before you buy anything else. Before the Iron Ranger, before the Dalton, the wingtip dress boot, before anything. I mean, of course, if you want a snow boot, then yeah, you need a snow boot. That's like, you know, obviously. But as far as versatility goes, this boot, absolutely a winner. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. What are your thoughts? I know this boot's been out for a while. It's probably not a stranger to anybody out there. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think. And as always, thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next one.